Hello everyone, Jason Alea back here again, and today we are going to be talking about episode 1 of the Book of Boba Fett. Now this is a show that I only saw like two trailers for maybe, you could probably see my reactions on my channel, um, sorry, just a little dog here, and um, I stayed away from all other news about it, um, the two trailers looked really good. So far, Star Wars related, I am more invested in the shows than I am in the actual films. Um, I love the first two seasons of The Mandalorian. Season 7 of The Clone Wars was a great conclusion. Uh, the Bad Batch is a pretty good show, but not like top tier in my opinion. Um, the more I think about it. Um, but overall, show wise, I have not been disappointed one time, and the Book of Boba Fett just continues Disney's streak of knowing how to do Star Wars on TV then instead of movies. Um, episode 1, the B Book of Boba Fett, basically is like two timelines. One timeline is where we see Boba Fett in the present, where he is trying to one of the biggest warlords in Tatooine or crime lords if I may add um, and is trying to do his ways instead of fear but with respect trying to make deals and trying to basically make something of his own in Tatooine and while that's happening whenever he goes to a cryo sleep he basically um dreams of his past in which that's a second timeline we see Boba Fett as he escaped from the from that creature from the pit and return the Jedi and basically we see him try to survive his way throughout Tatooine and I feel like this is going to continue out throughout the next six episodes and it's going to be the main structure of this entire show and it's going to all connect to one another. Maybe he's going to create new enemies. Because in this episode. It seems like he created some new um, friends. Or created a mutual respect with the sand people in Tatooine. What I also love is how the show also connects a little bit to Attack of the Clones. And despite me not really liking that movie too much, I do enjoy the fact that it doesn't outright exclude it. Like, those events are still important to the character, and they worked really well here. Uh, the actor who plays Boba Fett, uh, let me look him up. The book of Boba Fett, what's his name? Uh... Tim Mura Morrison? I'm sorry if I butchered your name, sir. But he, as you could tell, he's the guy who played Django in the previous film. And he came back to play Boba Fett. And man, he does a great job, especially with the action sequences. I also always admire the Star Wars movies and shows, both using practical effects and makeup more often than not. It creates a sense of realism. But unlike the movies in which it sometimes feels fake, here in the shows, man, these feel real. These locations feel lived in, you know? The way they're shot, the way it was all filmed and helmed, like Tatooine feels like a real place. And that's what I love most about this show. And I bet that this is a much cheaper show to make than the movies. Um, but the fact that this looks so much better than any of the films just amazes me. This is a beautiful looking show in the same vein as with The Mandalorian. Um, Min Na Wen, if I pronounce, I'm terrible with names, I'm sorry, who plays Nick Shan in the show and in The Clone Wars. Uh, returns as Boba Fett's partner 
and she also does a great job though she gets little characterization here I'm very interested to see what they do with her throughout the show what kind of relationship she and Boba Fett will form and if there's gonna be like falling out maybe I don't know this episode doesn't do much to enhance her character this is mostly like an introduction to Boba Fett himself and that's what I love most about it um, overall this was a great episode a very welcome return to the Star Wars franchise and I'm very interested to see where the rest of the season goes thank you guys so much for watching please leave a like subscribe comment and I'll see you guys next time say bye